Okay, so this is um, uh, uh, 492, 692 uh, Refraction Lab uh, Session 1. Uh, we'll do the next session uh, next Wednesday. And um, uh, I have unfortunately forgotten to ask you, each team, to bring at least one um, flash drive um, memory stick. Um, uh, there's ways around that if, uh, if a team doesn't have a memory stick with them. But one thing about these computers that I'm sure you're, you, you remember is that if you put something on the desktop or on the disk, you know, next time this computer is booted, it's gone. Um, and you, wow, so they can take them with them? Yep. All right, so we have plenty of flash drives. So, so here, take, why don't everyone, ta everyone take a flash drive and, uh, and you can just have it. Yeah. Do we have enough for everybody? Oh, darn. Okay. Oh, thanks. How many more do we need? Like three, four more? Fantastic. Yeah, another another reason you guys are awesome. Right. Appreciate I, it. I didn't even realize he had those. We were given the uh, the library administration gave us a whole bunch to give out, and we had them. I think at the out one for about a day before they were all gone. Of course, of course. So that's how you deal with these computers, right? They don't save anything. So you plug in your own flash drive, and you everything we do, you'll want to save on there. Okay, and that'll be the easiest way by far. So um, uh, then to get started, uh, we'll, uh, we'll bring up a web browser. Um, and uh, I've got Safari here. And you guys uh, should bring up um, uh, you know, either, uh, uh, what's the Google one? Um, Chrome. Either Chrome or Explorer will work. Um, and, uh, um, and then go to my. Um, uh, my research web page here. Um, so uh, each team, uh, let me, and, and another thing you might want to bring up is um, uh, you might want to bring up a, an email account uh, in a separate window because um, a couple of times this afternoon I'm going to ask you to email me some results. Okay? So that's what we'll, uh, that's what we'll do. That's how I'm going to how I'm going to find out, uh, you know, how, how the teams are doing. We'll we'll put the team results side by side and and uh, and see who wins. Um, I suppose I should select a prize, right? Uh, okay, well everybody gets a flash drive today, right? So next lab session I got to bring a prize. <laughs> so you want to go to my web page uh, crack.seismo.urnot.edu/louis. And then, of course, uh, you want to click on, um, uh, and I should increase the size. Uh, that's too much. Uh, you want to go to classes and click on apply geophysics. And, um, and there's several places you can click on the, uh, uh, this particular lab. Um, so, uh, and we're doing lab number one today and next week. So click on the first arrival. Um, well, I can't remember what it said. Um, service uh, no first arrival picking and velocity inversion lab. It's the refraction lab. Uh, let me to make that a little bigger. Okay. So here is the lab assignment, and um, it's still stated mostly in terms that we had it the last 20 years where um, um, you, what you see is, uh, is instructions for doing the lab individually. So uh, aren't you guys glad to know that you're guinea pigs? And uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally experimenting here with doing the labs as teams. Okay, um, But you know, we should be able to complete this lab completely during the lab periods in the next two weeks, and you're not going to have to, you know, finish up the labs as homework. All right, and your, um, 
you know, unless a unless a team uh, you know basically doesn't turn in, um, you know, doesn't show up to lab or or doesn't turn in half of it, you know, you're going to get full credit. You know, each of you as individuals gets full credit for for your teamwork. Okay, so that's how I'd like to run it this year, and. Um, you know, you guys will tell me in your class evaluations whether you thought it was successful. So, um, uh, what we're going to do is uh, is head down into the lab. It talks about the schedule, um, which uh, we'll modify. Um, you may uh, you may want to read uh, later on these key skills that you're going to learn in the um, uh, in doing this lab. Um, I probably listed too many. I should try to condense that. And um, then this first section about getting uh, Java is, uh, you know, if you're coming up to your own computer, um, all the machines in here, um, it does work. Uh, so you don't have to worry about getting the Java platform. Um, so getting JRG and ViewMat, the, the name of the software uh, that I wrote that that we're going to use to pick the first arrivals is called JRG or ViewMat, depending on uh, on which way I'm looking at it. Um, so, uh, and this will this link here, uh, the uh, 492 refractionzip uh, that's going to get you um, all of the um, um, uh, all of the uh, um, uh, materials you'll need for this lab: software, data. Um, spreadsheets, it's all in here. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the display to uh, Team 1. And, and so on the PC, we'll, we'll take you through um, we'll take you through on the PC huh. Compute. so this is probably acting as the second screen, right? Yeah. So can you move your um, your window over to um, uh, over to the right. Is that how it's going to work? Oh, I see something. Yeah. It's like number four, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you move the window over there, then we can see what you're doing in that in that window. Yeah. Can you can you mirror it or clone it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that would be easier. Yeah. Appreciate that. At least for a while, these machines were set up with two displays all the time, right? So. Yeah. It's distorted a little bit because of you got a yeah. HD monitor and not HD, but that should. Okay, so um, hit uh, Control Plus several times so we can. Uh, we can see a couple more times. Larger text. Yeah, there we go. OK, so now head on down to that link to 492 refraction.zip. And um, uh, you got three button mouse there. So, um, so point at the, the link to, to that, yeah. And, and uh, uh, what is it, a right, uh, a right click to get the the context sensitive menu, which does not have increased um, size, but what you the link what you're looking for is the selection um, save link as, and under under um, exp you're in um, um, oh you're in Firefox okay, I think in in Explorer for me this morning it it was something like. Uh, uh, save link target as or something like that. So uh, let me know if you don't see that. And on Safari it says download link file as. And so then what you want to do is find your um, your flash drive, okay, and uh, put it. You know, make yourself a folder on that flash drive for 492, and then and then put. Um, uh, Put the zip file down inside your 492 folder. So we'll do it. You know, you'll do it. You can do actually everything on the flash drive. You know, all the data and, and the software and everything is is really just a few megabytes. So it's not a it's not a huge um, 
it's not a huge load. Okay, so I'll save. And um, so now uh, go to Windows Explorer and, and go to that folder. And you should see the 492 refra refraction zip um, uh, file in there. And uh, now what happens when you double click on that, on that zip file? OK, now it, it's pretending to open up as if it was just a folder, but it's not really a folder. OK, um, and you see um, you see there uh, um, on the um, uh, let me uh, let me get this on the on the Mac. OK. Um, oh boy. So you see uh, the at the top left, it says add extract. Uh, text. What you want to do is hit the extract button, and you want to you want to um, extract it into uh, into that 492 folder on your flash drive. Um, so hit OK, and uh, and so now this thing that looks like a Windows Explorer uh, uh, folder just just close it. You know, red exit. And uh, so now you're looking at your folder, um, and let me get there on the on the Mac. Um, and we have a uh, 492. Um, uh, let's see. Oh boy. Ah, here we go. 492 refraction.zip. And on the Mac, you double click on it, and it becomes a, uh, expands into a folder. And we go into the folder, and we should see the uh, same thing. So you see uh, uh, some HTML files. You see a. Um, a couple of .jar files. Those hold the software, the Java software. Um, that th those those jar files, by the way, you can double click on them in um, uh, in Linux on a Linux system. You can double click on uh, them on a on a Mac on a on a on several varieties of Windows, it, and the software works the same uh, on all those different machines. Um, so this is, and this software is open source. Um, unlike the software we'll use for the Remy Lab, um, you can take this software and and you're welcome to use it in your own consulting. Uh, I don't care if you make money from it. Um, if you want to make changes to the code, uh, I'd, I'd love to uh, work them into the the uh, official system. Um, that's all. Uh, uh, that'd be all good. Now you guys on the PC, you're still looking at the uh, at the the unzip uh, uh, thing, so uh, uh, x that out at the upper right. Uh, okay, and here's the actual folder in Windows Explorer. Is that correct? I think so. So you can see the zip file is still in there, but all the other files are are sitting there uh, uh, as well. Uh, not that you can see it. Um, so um, uh, let's go ahead and um, uh, the first thing to do then is to find that jrg500.jar. Why don't you highlight that? Uh, not that you can see anything on the screen here. Um, and then double click on that. Um, and then. Uh, All right, I got to change my Mac security preferences. Cuz uh, I guess I'm not an identified developer. At least on the on the Windows there it started up pretty well.
Um, okay, and I can get around that by control clicking on it in uh, on the Mac. So that's good. So what it comes up with is a is kind of a default um, uh, a default um, uh, zero data set. You know, this is meant to be a uh, uh, a time uh, uh, a time distance plot, uh, a uh, a time section, and um, so let's load some some data into it, and uh, then I'll try to explain to you what the data is all about. Um, so uh, uh, is is everybody at this point now? All the teams are uh, have got the software open. All right. So um, under the file menu, um, you do a, a load JRG pack. And uh, what you want to do is go navigate to your, uh, to your, uh, 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 your memory stick and down to the folder that you, that you have, uh, the new folder you made. And uh, then you um, you see there's a, a folder in there. There's there's one folder in there. Ignore the underscore Mac OS X. There's one folder in there uh, that ends in a dot JRG. That folder is the JRG pack. But to open it, you actually have to um, uh, you actually have to go down into that folder, and uh, and then you can when you're loading a JRG pack, you can. Just double click on any of the folders down, any of the files down underneath. So just pick one and uh, double click on it. And then you should see something like this. OK. Um, now let's say uh, uh, you want to make it wider. All right. Uh, what you can do is. Um, is uh, uh, under the uh, the edit menu, you can uh, divide the vertical exaggeration by two. So that that increases the vertical exaggeration by two. Um, so let's let's undo that. Okay. So under edit, uh, go to vertical exaggeration, and you hit times two. So now hit slash two. Divide by two. Now it's back to where it was. Okay. So under edit again, um, vertical exaggeration slash two again. Okay, uh, so now uh, you can go under the view menu and zoom image two, and uh, it was at one fifty percent. Hit two hundred percent, or actually, uh, you know, when you're actually picking, well, let's let's do two hundred percent for now. Okay. Uh, we'll go. We'll go higher. Uh, higher zooms uh, later on. A um, couple things to uh, to notice about this display. Um, uh, there's a, a vertical axis, and notice that that is uh, that's marked time, and it goes from zero at the top to one at the uh, uh, at the bottom. Okay, so. Uh, uh, we have zero seconds after the initiation of the source at the top, and one second after initiation of the source at the bottom. Uh, in this case, the source was a, uh, uh, I think, ten pounds of um, of explosive in a in a two meter hole, maybe a three meter hole. Um, and uh, so that's the uh, vertical axis. The horizontal axis is. Uh, uh, you know, I presented to you uh, in refraction. I presented to you um, a lot of um, a lot of axes, uh, uh, horizontal axes that that said capital X, which is the source receiver distance, and that's not what we're plotting here. What we're plotting is the um, it says receiver x coordinate. So the geophone had an x coordinate, and that's what we're what we're plotting here, and it goes from uh, 15.24 meters on the left-hand side to um, uh, 746 or so meters on the uh, on the right-hand side. So that's um, that's the location of the receiver 
um, and uh, 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 and not the not the not the uh, source receiver distance. Okay, um, and this actually uh, it, you know from left to right it's uh, west to east. Okay, so it's a north kind of a north looking time section. Okay, um, what's in the what's in the section? Well, you can probably see that vertically there's a bunch of these uh, kind of strips. Okay. And um, uh, the uh, yeah don't don't drag that just yet okay um, vertically there's all these strips each strip is the record from one geophone and there are 48 strips in this because uh, there were 48 geophones in the survey and they were laid out at intervals of 15.24 meters um, from west to east. Um, and then uh, uh, the colors uh, correlate with the amplitude recorded by that geophone. So, I mean, technically, it's um, uh, it's it's the uh, vertical uh, vertical component of uh, of ground motion, um, and it's uh, the the actual the the ground motions are are particle velocities vertically, uh, and. Um, but it's not calibrated. I mean, I'm not saying here that the uh, if you look at the amplitude scale down at the bottom, right, you can see that that blue is a particle velocity of minus two two hundred and eight, and red is a particle velocity of of plus two hundred and eight, and where it's white or gray, it's uh, uh, it's basically zero particle velocity. So if nothing's happening, it's white or gray, using this color scale. Um, and and where where the particle velocity was less than two hundred and eight or or greater than two hundred I mean less than minus two hundred eight or greater than two hundred eight um, you know where it was more negative or more positive than the two hundred eight um, you know it saturates at uh, solid blue or solid red so there's still there's still more information there uh, about the particle velocities. Now, now uh, a particle velocity of 208 uh, meters per second is uh, what? That's probably like a rifle muzzle velocity. No, that's a little s slow. That'd be about 200 miles an hour. Um, so um, it's uh, no, no, uh, about 500 miles an hour, I think. Yeah, 500 miles an hour. So it's less than uh, it's less than the speed of sound. Um, but uh, as a ground shaking velocity, I guarantee you that's uh, you know uh, eight or ten orders of magnitude too high, right? Where the actual particle velocities were were probably on the order of um, um, no higher than millimeters per second, okay, uh, and probably two orders of magnitude below that over most of this. Um, so. Uh, uh, what does this amplitude scale mean? Um, well, here's the fact: we don't care. All right, uh, we didn't bother to calibrate the particle velocities, uh, and even if we did calibrate it, you know, the um, the geophones are are uh, are probably not going to hold to a calibration for more than half a day. You know, as temperature changes, the calibration will probably change by uh, fifty percent. Um, all we care about here is when the energy appears, and what is stronger than what. So as long as the geophones are all about the same, okay, um, you know, in, in terms of their response and the signal they're giving for a particular particle velocity, if they're, you know, if they're within a factor of, of 10 of each other, uh, we can still use it. And we don't care what the absolute calibration is. All right? Because the whole point here is you know, what time does the energy first arrive? All right, and if you move your way down from the the top of the plot, you know which is zero time, you know along any one of those columns at any one of those geophones, and you go to where it first turns red in this record, right? That's that's when the and, and you can see I've made some picks for you uh, ahead of time, and those are built into the JRG pack that holds the data. So those those picks are to guide you uh, as to uh, you know where at least I thought the first arrival was. Okay, um, so uh, 
let's uh, let's go ahead and and zoom this. Well, let's let's put in more vertical exaggeration to to see the the pics a bit better. So I'm going to go to edit vertical exaggeration. Um, let's make it times five. Okay, so that's a pretty good that's a pretty good display. Uh, you can see, still see most of it on the screen, and you can see that I, I tried to pick, you know, where it, the the noise, you know, that 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 alternation between light red and light light blue uh, and white, you know, just sort of organized itself and became, you know, uh, light red for a while before it goes into the into the dark red. Um, you know the second pick from the left. I don't know. That may be uh, a little bit late. Um, you know, maybe right right above it is where it actually goes. Uh, the second one from the left. Yeah, that one. You know, I think it's uh, uh, possibly a, a little bit late. But you know, this is this is interpretational. This is where. This is why uh, in this lab, you know, each team's not going. All all five teams are not going to get the same answer. You know, you could all you could all do everything perfectly. And because it's interpretational, you're not going to get the same answer. All right. Um, uh, here's another thing about this display. Um, under the edit menu, hit um, uh, clip at maximum. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now this is a uh, what this is doing is it's saying. I'm not going to go to uh, all the way to to solid red or solid blue until I'm at the actual maximum amplitude in this one particular record. Okay, and 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 uh, scroll down to the uh, uh, the very bottom, and you can see what the maximum amplitude is. I think it says uh, like 3586 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's a that's a Bit more than we uh, um, than we saw before, maybe a factor of ten. And um, now, if you scroll back up to the the top, okay, <clears throat> you can see that there are some waves um, that are uh, that are very strong, okay, that are coming in kind of early. Uh, and there are, um, but there are others um, uh, to the left that that are not nearly as strong, okay. So. Um, and, and and what we want to do is we want to pick we want to time when you know when that um, uh, when that energy first arrives so we're kind of overdriving the color scale you know so so go back to uh, clip uh, the edit menu and clip at RMS um, and so let's see what what that does that's not clipping it as uh, as severely. Um, and you can see you can see a bit more, but I you know I, I like to get a better view of the of the noise. So now go to the edit menu and select uh, uh, plot parameters right at the top. And uh, here's a bunch of the things in this dialog that affect the uh, the plot. And the one that you want to deal with is this uh, uh, RMS. Uh, it says amplitude clip uh, RMS. Um, so it's like the uh, one, two, th it's a three, four, the fifth item, yeah. So um, uh, click on the left side of the RMS uh, letters and enter, uh, let's try 0 0.1 times RMS. So whatever the RMS amplitude is of the whole time section, now this is going to this is going to clip it at a tenth of that. So you got uh, 0 0.1. Uh, I'll put a star in there before the uh, yeah 0 0.1 star RMS. So then you apply changes. Uh, yeah, not reset. See uh, the apply changes button. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit too strong, but not not too bad. Now let's try uh, go back and make it 0 0.2 times our star RMS. That's pretty close to what we started with. So, so you know, I'm I'm not really worried here in this lab about, um, you know, the relative amplitudes. Even I just want to see when that energy first arrives at each geophone. Um, so that and and so overdriving the color scale like this is you know works pretty well. 
Um, okay. So, uh, any questions about about what this particular display is showing? Um, the uh, the experiment it came from. Um, well, let's see. Let's see how, how well you guys understand it. Um, uh, where can anybody tell me where the um, where the source of seismic energy is from this uh, from this particular record? Yeah, it's off the right hand side. Um, how would I know if the source was was you know exactly at the right hand side? You know, right on the the right hand most geophone. How would I know that? Yeah, the time right, right. You'd see some energy right at zero time, right? And we don't. So um, you know, we can see that the uh, uh, the source is is actually you know further off the right hand side of the of the geophones. It's a what you might call an offset source. Okay. Um, uh, now, um, now this is one record out of five, and you can see that. At the uh, at the top, it says plane index, and indexes always start at zero, uh, and the the range of indexes is zero through four, which is you know five different um, five different records. So scroll the uh, uh, that that little scroll bar in there. If you hit animate, it doesn't do anything anymore. The computer says, "Ha ha! I can animate this in less than a hundredth of a second. You know, did you see that? <laughs> right? You click the animate button. Let's just let's just see what it does." Yeah, right. It's not very useful. So uh, uh, you have to drag that uh, that slider, okay? And uh, yeah, stop at that middle. Yeah, stop there. Um, where's the source uh, for this record? Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually uh, uh, about uh, three meters uh, away from the middle geophone there. There's actually a lateral shift, so it's not quite zero. Um, you know, if 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 I put the geophone down in the hole with the with the blast, right? I sh it should be exactly at zero. Um, but uh, you know, I didn't want to blow up the geophone, so I put it uh, I put it uh, ten feet away. Um, you know, geophone costs a uh, hundred bucks, so. Um, um, I mean the uh, the sensors that uh, you're using, Tyler. Um, you know those are those are at least three thousand each, I think, in the seismic network. Yeah, yeah. You know three to three thousand to twenty five thousand, I think, is the, their range. We're we're not using equipment that expensive, but uh, but uh, and since I need uh, forty eight geophones, you know, a hundred dollars each is about all I can afford. Uh, but you can see they're sensitive enough for this work. Um, Okay, uh, so now um, uh, let's go to the the very rightmost, uh, you know, record index four, the fifth record. Okay, now um, uh, so uh, uh, where's the source on this one? Yeah, and and in fact, if if the first geophone, the very leftmost geophone, was working. Uh, you know, it would be at zero time, right? <laughs> but that one was dead for some reason. Um, there's a little bit of electronic noise and a, you know, some vestige of of a wave there, but it didn't work very well. So uh, you can't really see that zero arrival, that zero time arrival. Um, so so uh, what kind of what kind of survey is this? This is a, I, I mean. It, as I said this morning, it is actually a reflection survey. But if I take the first record that we looked at and this record, what have I got? Anybody want to hazard a guess? So I've taken I've taken a um, uh, I've I've taken you know forty eight geophones and I laid them out east to west, you know, covering a distance of seven hundred meters, and. Um, and the first record you looked at had a shot on the right hand side, and now this one has a shot on the left hand side. Yeah. Can you test them for a dip? Absolutely. So this is this is called a, a reversed refraction survey. Okay, I've got two, I've got two uh, sources, one at each end, and and so yeah, we got to test for dip. Um, if there was no dip, 
these records would be the same. Okay, let's let's scroll back to the first record. Are these records the same? Not at all. So there's dip, right? Um, and uh, uh, the dip here is, uh, um, you know, we're going to figure it out. It's only uh, 20 or 30 degrees, and that's how different that little dip makes the records. Okay, so yeah, this is a very nice example of, uh, which is why I use it, of testing for dip. Um, so, uh, um, okay, let me just check the uh, the assignment, which is way down at the bottom of the. Uh, um, I just want to, you know, I'm, I'm making sure I'm hitting all the points here. Um, so we've tried uh, displaying the record in a couple of different ways. Um, so it's time to make it's time to make picks. Okay, first arrival picks. Um, so so let me demo. Let me. I will. I will make picks on this uh, first record, and um, uh, and then uh, we'll make sure that you guys can can make picks on the um, um, on the the last record. Uh, just quickly scroll over to the the fifth record. Um, yeah. Uh, so right now we're going to pick the first record. We're going to pick this last record. Uh, and we're going to pick, you know, the first arrival time on every single geophone. You know, so forty. Well, the one on the very left we can't. So okay, so forty-seven picks per uh, per record. All right. Now scroll to the middle, the middle one. Okay. We've got uh, we've got five records in here. We're going to pick uh, four right now. Um, I'd like you guys to uh, to pick. Um, um, uh, Hopefully today we'll we'll get a start at it to uh, to pick the uh, the other um, uh, the other records you know forty seven picks uh, for for three more records um, so hopefully we'll get a start at that but to to really get started in the lab uh, what we need to do is pick these two records okay so I've I've provided some picks on if go back to the first record now I've provided some picks on the um, um, on on the two end records uh, to guide you, and basically what you got to do is fill in uh, in between. So what you want to do is point at um, uh, yeah okay we'll start on the left. Doesn't matter doesn't matter what order you pick the traces in, any order is fine. But start on the left and point at uh, at where you want to pick, and the uh, and maybe let's try uh, under uh, view. Uh, zoom image to 500 percent. Okay, it's not really it's not really going that far, but uh, it'll go it'll go uh, part way. So um, you know, try to make a pick, uh, and if you don't like mine, just uh, my pick. Just uh, uh, make another pick. Okay. Do you want to go like with the very first slightly red one or? Yeah, yeah. The very first slightly red, it, the very first, you know, it's like solid slightly red is where, you know, that's where the energy becomes prominent, you know. Sorry? Yeah. I was looking for the brightness on the bottom. Oh, yeah. You guys can't. Actually, you, you might be able to see it on the screen better. <laughs> uh, talk about hand-eye coordination, right? So let's try to, let's try to pick all... Um, so okay, I'm going to switch back to my to my monitor. Um, uh, I would say the first slightly red. Okay, so now we're back to my monitor, and uh, maybe you can see where I'm where I'm picking here. And yeah, I didn't like that, so I'll I'll just pick here. And um, let's see. In fact, I'm even going to zoom in uh, some more. Maybe you can see it better. Yeah. How do you get rid of like takes already on there? It's not easy. So you don't you don't have to. Okay. Um, but uh, all right, if you want to, uh, let me show you how. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so the very the very last pick you made, you can get rid of that by going to the edit menu and hitting undo last pick. Okay, so I can do that, and and the last one I made disappears. I, if I want if I want to eliminate like the like the my hints, okay, I'll. Uh, uh, you could do that before you start, but let's say you've got like five in there that you've picked all forty-seven, and you got five in there you don't like. Okay, here's the only way to do it. Um, and it, sorry, it's not very easy. Um, you view pick window. We're gonna have to go to the pick window anyway. And uh, you know, here's a list of picks in the order they were made. Um, now there's a lot of information in these picks that we'll look at later, but um, you know, if I if I pick the first uh, half of the picks that I've made here, and I just uh, so I, I select the text, you know those those lines that I want to get rid of, right? And I hit um, uh, I'm just going to hit delete the delete button, right? They're they're gone. Oh, I see. There's a few more, right? You can see there's my my notation at the uh, at the beginning there, right? So um, uh, I've got um, I've got a few picks uh, from the. Um, uh, I, I, I've deleted now all of the uh, picks I put in there previously, okay, and then I have to say, um, uh, where is it? Um, refresh, okay, and and now they're now they're gone. So if you can find the pick in the text, which I agree is not very convenient. Then you can just erase it from the text and and then hit refresh. So uh, let me see if I can zoom in again. And so uh, and notice the picks. You know they get made kind of under the tip of the arrow, not off the tip of the arrow. And now you come to these these ones, right? This one. Is blue, whereas the next door ones are red. Anybody have a guess about what happened there? Right, that trace where the other ones next to it are, are red, it's blue. Exactly, exactly. The equipment that I have allows you to plug in the geophone, you know, two different two different connections. And and uh, you know my crew out there in 1998 they plugged it into the wrong connection, and so that reversed the sign. Now we could fix that, but we're just picking. We don't need to fix it at all. Just here, I just got to recognize. Okay, I'm picking. You know, the beginning of the blue instead of the. Uh, and I, I don't kind of don't like that where I picked that one. Okay, I'm gonna put it up there. Okay, and then I can continue. You know, all I did was pick uh, blue instead of red. And you can see I'm not doing the most careful job. Consistency is good. You know, if you decide you're gonna you're gonna do the very very earliest solid red, you know, then keep at it. And I'm kind of doing you know into the solid red a little bit. All right now I gotta scroll up, see where I am. Well, that's a guess. Yeah. Uh, for the assignment, did you say the, you know, the four different side lot files, that's for each phase? Can you override? Uh, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later. I, the first thing I want to do is, is, is pick the first record and the last record. Okay. And we'll get those picks out into Excel, and then we can proceed with the rest of the lab. So once we get, once we get into Excel, once we get up, when we've got some data sets into Excel, then uh, we could, you know, if you got have, if we have more time today, 
we can go ahead and pick the other three records. And that's like, it doesn't matter which, which file you use from the pixie.yeah file. Uh, right, when you, when you, when you first, when you first open the, uh, the GRG pack. That's right, that's right. Okay, so I think I've got it. I don't know what the video recording is going to look like, but um, so um, so now uh, you can see the uh, the pick text, and uh, and you can see the picks on the um, on, on the first record. So uh, group uh, 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 team one. Have you got 48 picks yet? Okay, you're still working on it? Just about. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, uh, team two? Yeah. You got 48 on the first record. Three? Who's team three? Okay, okay. And uh, team four? Yeah. Okay, and five? All right. And did it matter if we had two picks on the same? Like if we wanted to pick, we pick one of yours, or we had to go and delete it? Um, you, can leave, you can leave both on there. Yeah, you might want to you might want to remember, um, you know, or write down which one is which one is is the earlier one or the later one the one you want. That'll make a difference later when we're interpreting the the picks. Or you could go in like I did, and you could erase all of my original picks, you know, that were above the the note there. <clears throat> Okay, so so, um, so team um, um, team three. When you're ready, go to the last record and start picking it. And are are you guys done with the the first record yet? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's all go to the last record, index four. I'm not there yet. Okay, here we go, and let's pick uh, let's pick it. Um, Yeah, so when you're looking in the pick window, it's the pick window only shows you the picks in the in the particular record that you're looking at. They haven't they haven't disappeared. That's a promise. Okay. Um, uh, give it a shot. You know. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, let me try it too. All right. Um, let's see. So. Uh, uh, that's yeah. That's on the pick windows menu, right? And you can say edit auto pick. And uh, you know, on 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 this record, it does a pretty good job. Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, it failed to pick one trace appropriately. Um, it's probably made a pick on the uh, on the blank trace too, but I won't worry about that. You see, it may it was a little bit too late on the uh, on the on the on trace two. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, put a pick there. Um, yeah, that that worked just fine. Some data sets uh, you can auto pick um, if you're lucky. The you know for you and you guys in the refraction reflection uh, team. Um, if you're lucky, you'll be able to auto pick the, the data from the field. Nice. Yeah, it would be nice, but it's, uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Or you know, or you might you might uh, you know you might auto pick and you find you got to correct uh, you got to correct um, you know half the picks. That's still you're still ahead, right? You know, if you can auto pick half the traces, that's not too bad. Um, now notice that the uh, the auto picks, at least here for me, they're not quite at the very beginning, right? They're a little late, yeah. you know. So maybe you know, if I was to be totally consistent, I would go back and I would auto pick the first record too. But I'm going to leave that inconsistency into my results here. Um, 
Okay, so uh, each team, let me know when you're when you've got all um, when you've got uh, both records picked, first and the last record. So team three's got it. Yeah. Team two, four is good. Five's good. And and one. Okay. So um, now now uh, there's several ways to save. I mean. Uh, you know, here I'm looking at the, the picks from uh, from record uh, index four. You know, and if I scroll back to record index one, there's the picks now in the pick window from record one, or or, or index zero. Um, I can um, I can say uh, uh, save or show all, okay, and a window will pop up. But let me let me save it a, a let me save it a different way. Um, because I, I say in here that I want to see um, I want to see the the first record with with your picks. Oh, and look what happened when I hit auto pick, it picked all the records. That's uh, uh, right. So it'll it'll redo your picks. And actually, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I now I'm behind. I need to go through and uh, and repick some of these. Um, you know where where auto pick for some reason or other has is is just too late. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's too late. That's too late. Okay, I think that's too late. That one. Okay, so that's uh, that's consistent now. Um, okay, so so here's here's how to save a plot and the picks, you know, to files at the same time. Okay, so let's see uh, what we've really done here is um, uh, you know this is lab one, and we uh, right I say turn in a labeled plot. Okay, um, so this is lab one uh, question four. Okay, that we're doing here. So I'm going to save a JRG. I'm going to say under the file menu on the data. I say save JRG pack, and um, I need to make sure that I'm not saving inside any other JRG pack. I want to be up in that 492 refraction um, uh, folder. Okay, uh, and um, and instead of calling it the same thing as the other GRG pack, I'm going to call it uh, Lab One uh, Question. Uh, what was that? Question three. Question four. Thank you. Uh, question four. Uh, four. So L one Q three. That's what I'm going to call the GRG pack. Okay. And so now it's saved. Uh, and and we have we have everything we need now. Except for the um, uh, for the whole lab, except for sending the picks to Satish, okay. To send the picks to Satish, we need to pick the uh, the other um, the other records too, uh, which actually did get th those got auto picked too. But I I haven't uh, I haven't done that. I, I haven't checked them yet. Okay, so let's. Uh, uh, Let's minimize. Uh, let's minimize this, um, and um, um, <clears throat> and let's uh, let's deal with the uh, the picks themselves. Okay. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is uh, uh, I want all of you to email me. That uh, okay. So so go to yeah, not this one. Um, go into your into your folder. Where is that? No. Nope. Now oh, here we go. Okay. So go into your folder, and uh, and find that new GRG pack. Okay. And open it up. And there are several files in there. One of them ends in .ps. Okay. 
So uh, see if you can email that to, to me, louis at unr.edu. Just that, just that one file, one from each team. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The dot p the end the file that ends in dot ps. That's the one I want you to email me. Yeah. You want us to save the pics to our folder? Um, the the okay. Now that you might be wondering about where the pics are, right? Uh, here we go. Um, let's see if I can find the. Uh, here we go. Um, so those are in. Uh, actually, you can't see that, can you? Um, so down under the JRG pack folder, um, that's the uh, the file l1q4.jrg.pck. So the pics are all in that in that file. So um, if you uh, if you uh, right click on that um, uh, or uh, control click on that. You should be able to open it with, um, you know, like on the map Mac, I can open it with text edit, um, and you should be able to open it up with um, uh, WordPad. Um, I tend not to use Notepad, but WordPad should work. And you should see something like this. And I have to. Uh, so each pick has a has a line. There should be, actually, in this one, there's there's quite a lot of lines, right? Um, and uh, let me explain uh, what we've got here. Um, Um, so the first value in here is the actual trace amplitude where you where you picked it. The second one, the second column, is the um, uh, that's the 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 index of the of the time point. And then the third one is the time in seconds of that the pick is at. So obviously that's going to be of interest to us. Uh, the um, uh, the fourth column is the trace index, you know, zero through uh, forty-seven. The fifth column is the is the distance, you know, that that uh, um, geophone x coordinate, and that's in meters. The uh, the sixth column is the uh, um, is the uh, uh, the plane index. That's the the record number. Okay. So if you go down, you know, 48, we should be looking at, uh, you know, here the sixth column is still zero, and um, then the, um, uh, yeah, still zero. Come on, where are we? Oh yeah, now the the the, fifth, the sixth column and the seventh column both switch to one. Where does that happen? So that means we're in the in the second record. Yeah, here's the uh, the last trace. No, not quite. That's the last trace in the uh, first record, and uh, this is the first trace in the second record. Um, so we go down to the bottom, 
because this, this one I, I auto picked, so I have uh, all five records uh, picked in here. Not that the middle ones are right. Uh, the very last line is, um, you know, index four, and um, uh, and so all the ones that have index four are in that last record. And so I'm I'm looking. Oh yeah, see there's no nope, still index four. Uh, right, index four. Oh, there's index four. There, index three. And so that's index three. So this is the first line of index four. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, a lot of text here. Uh, you can see the actual uh, coordinates of the source: s x, s y, s z. Those are the um, the x and y. Uh, it's just a local metric coordinate system: x and y and elevation um, of the source. So so you can see that's always the same on uh, when you're on one record, right? Because the source doesn't move. Uh, but also, uh, you know, gx, gy, gz, the location on the same coordinate system and the elevation of the receiver. Uh, and then here's the the offset, the capital X, uh, in meters. Um, so uh, um, that's what uh, that's what's in there. Uh, so I'm going to leave this text selected because we're going to look at it in a sec. But first. Um, I want to check, uh, and I have...